Hello, Alan Steady here again with Firewalls.com. In today's video, we're going to be discussing content filtering and demonstrating how you can create content filter policies based on a particular source address. So when we're talking about content filtering, there's a number of different ways that we can slice and dice this. We can implement our content filter policies based off individual hosts, networks, groups of hosts, groups of networks, zones, or actually individual users or groups. However, in order to be able to enforce content filter policies based off of a user or a group, it does require Active Directory integration in the form of an ADSSO. There's some additional methods that we could use to enforce a user-based policy using browser authentication. And coming soon in the latest Sophos firmware update, 17.5 will actually allow us to utilize our Sophos endpoint to define our user-based policy. So that's going to be really awesome. Stay tuned for that. And if you're not using the Sophos endpoint yet, we're going to go ahead and include a link below that'll activate a 30-day trial. So you'll definitely want to go ahead and get that fired up and start playing around with it. Let's go ahead and jump into the web admin of our Sophos XG firewall and take a look. So here in the web admin of our Sophos XG firewall, we enforce our content filter policies within our firewall access controls. So here under protect and firewalls is where we're going to be adding our new firewall rule. So here we've already got our firewall policies defined for the entire internal network where we're enforcing a more stricter content filter policy. But say you're an IT admin or you're the business owner and you need a more relaxed policy. So the important thing to remember is that our firewall rules are always processed in order. So the positioning of our policy that we're going to be building here is going to be very important. So when we create this rule, we're actually going to want to put this above our general LAN to WAN content filter policy that's being applied to the entire internal network. That way our content filter policy with just our individual host is processed first. If we were to create the firewall policy with our individual host and put it below our firewall policy that we're enforcing for the entire internal network, our rule will never be processed. We're going to hit the LAN to WAN web surfing rule because my machine is actually a member of the internal network. We'll go ahead and take a look at this firewall policy that we have built out now that's being applied to the entire internal network. So here you can see that we're defining the source network. So that's the entire subnet. And because I want to enforce this policy for just an individual host, what we'll actually do, I'll go ahead and cancel this here, is we're going to go ahead and clone this policy. We'll clone it above. That's very important. Get rid of this guy. We'll make this a little bit more descriptive. So here in our rule, what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to allow just our individual hosts access to any content out there on the web. We still want to enforce a content filter policy because we're still going to get the, the benefits of the malware scanning, but we just don't want to enforce any sort of content restrictions. So right here in our source, we're just going to go ahead and leave our source zone set to, to our LAN. And here under our network is we're actually going to define the specific source. So we're saying that it's going to be in the LAN zone here in our source networks and devices is where we're actually defining the network or hosts. Let me pull up a command prompt here. We're actually going to need to grab my IP address. Okay, so my IP address is the 10.0.1.2, so we'll go ahead and create that host object. And save it. And if we were enforcing our content filter policy based off a user or group, you could actually do that here, or you could actually even do that within the web filter policy. And I'll show you that here at the end of this video. All right, and under our destinations, I guess before I move on too much further, I did kind of skip over this section here. So in our destination, we're saying that we're allowing our, our individual host that's sitting on our LAN zone access to the public network in the WAN to go anywhere using our web surfing services. So this is our HTTP, HTTPS. And as always, down here, we've got our web malware and content scanning. So we've got all of our HTTP, UDP. Uh, HTTPS is definitely a, a good thing to add. We won't go there in this video. But if that's something you're not doing already, you'll certainly want to prepare and spend some time getting ready to implement HTTPS, decrypt, and scan. All right, so down here under our advanced is where we're actually defining all of our policies. So right here under our web filter policy is where we're going to define the type of content we want to allow our individual host to go to. So in our example here, we're just going to allow our IT admin or our business owner to go anywhere, view any type of content on the web, but they're still going to get the benefits of all the malware scanning. And of course, we always want to make sure that we're logging our traffic. So I'm going to go ahead and click clone here. If you were building this out from scratch, this would be saved for you. 
Okay, awesome. So our new access control has been created. We can see that here. And again, just going through how the rules are processed, we can see that this rule here that we just created is going to be processed before our global policy that we're applying to the entire internal network. So our individual host will take precedence over the global policy. So I mentioned when we were building out the firewall rule that we could control who the policy was going to apply to based on individual users or groups. But there's actually another really cool way that we can do this. So if I come over here to web, here in our web policies, we can actually define the content that individual users or groups are able to access within a single policy. So it's certainly possible to consolidate our two firewall rules and just create a single rule, which is certainly going to help with controlling the number of rules that we're building. So I just wanted to point that out and show you some of the other ways that we can enforce content filtering. We'll take a deeper dive into some of these alternative methods that I've discussed, so stay tuned for that. And that's really it. I hope you found this video helpful. Be sure to give us a thumbs up below and come and check us out at firewalls.com. It's www.firewalls.com. Get secure. Stay secure.